All right, so there are a lot of methods to uh, solve this problem. And of course, we're not going to uh, cover all of these. We will cover like a very simple deep learning approach, which is a convolutional uh, approach. And this you will see like how this can be easily extended from what we have already covered. Like we have talked about classification, we have talked about autoencoders and how all those concepts are going to be useful in solving the semantic segmentation problem. All right, so let's start. Uh, Let's, let's start with some of the basics. So fully convolutional network, again, uh, I think we, we covered this in one of the lectures where the idea was, instead of having fully connected layers at the end, we will just convert them to convolutional layers and we know how to do that. And there are some benefits uh, about that. So we, we have already covered those, uh, those benefits. So one of, the, one of the benefit is, if your resolution of the input image is changing, then you don't have to worry about changing your network. Whatever network you have, it will still work if your network is fully convolutional. As against to if you have fully connected layers, if you change the resolution of your input image, then you're going to have problem and you won't be able to actually process that image using such a network. Okay, so that's just one flexibility you can have. Now, what we can do is, we can use like such fully convolutional networks to encode the images, okay? And these encodings, or you can say like features, kind of represent what objects or what kind of different parts of objects are present in the input image. So we'll have that information over here. And that's what we use for classification as well. Now, the goal is, instead of just doing classification, let's say if you have 21 different categories, so you were going to predict 21 different numbers, what you're going to do is you're going to extend this network and do like this pixel wise prediction. Okay, so we'll try to utilize these features and try to upsample those features and try to say which category each pixel belongs to. And this might remind you of uh, the auto encoders we were studying, where you have this encoder branch and then you have a decoder branch. And the decoder was trying to actually, in that case, it was just trying to decode the original input. But in this case, instead of decoding the original input, we are just trying to get this segmentation map. And in a way, the autoencoders you have developed, that can also be used to solve this problem. You just have to have a different loss function where you will say that, okay, which category each pixels belong to instead of just reconstructing constructing the original image. All right, so that, that's also a viable solution. I'm not, not saying it will work very well, but that's a solution. It will give you some kind of results, all right? And in a way, this architecture, which you're going to dis discuss, like this is also in a way, a kind of autoencoder, not exactly the same, but it falls in uh, that, that category. Now, we have these features, let's say 4096. Four now, one issue is, these are kind of flattened features. So we don't have any kind of spatial information restored here, right? So whatever information we have, whatever uh, values we have, this corresponds to the whole image. As against that, against uh, as opposed to that, if you look at these features uh, of the previous layers, there is some kind of spatial information preserved, right? So in a way, you can say that let's look at this second layer, which is uh, two fifty six different channels, and let's say this height is I don't know maybe fifty six cross fifty six. So in a way, we can say that okay, one chunk of this uh, activation map actually belongs to this image person, right? And similarly, like the top right will be corresponding to this region. So we have some kind of one-to-one -one correspondence. We know that, okay, these features are actually corresponding to this region. And that's why these features are actually very useful for predicting this kind of segmentation map. All right, so the simple solution could be, you can just pre-train your network for classification tasks, all right? And if you remember this, it's exactly what we did for uh, object detection. We just took like a classification network and we trained it for classification. And then for object detection, we just added a few heads on top of that, right? Exactly, we're going to do the same thing here as well. So we will do classification, but we'll make sure that we don't have any fully connected layers. We'll just convert all of those layers to uh, fully convolutional uh, layers. So that's one minor change. And then we are going to use skip layer so this is a concept uh, i will briefly explain like what this means 
So we'll try to use skip layers to improve this uh, segmentation quality. So the idea is we want to use these intermediate features as well to make this prediction. And the motivation is because these features actually preserve some kind of structural information from the input image, and they have some kind of spatial correspondence as well. So that's why they are very useful. And skip connections are something when you utilize these features in the decoder part of your autoencoder. Okay, so you, and the, you can also uh, think of these as like uh, the skip connections or the residual blocks you have in your ResNet architecture, right? So you just uh, pass these features to future layers. Okay, so those are called skip connections. Now let's try to understand like uh, the, the solution. So initially your classification will just predict, let's say if you have thousand different categories, it will predict thousand different numbers. And each number will say uh, which object is present. For example, if this is a cat, this activation is going to be high. So the first change, as I said, uh, we will do, we'll make it fully convolutional. So we don't have any fully connected layers here. Everything is uh, convolutional and we still have thousand different predictions. Now, what we do is we use these thousand different predictions to predict this kind of feature map. Okay, so this is some kind of heat map where we will say that, okay, which pixel belongs to which category. For example, if it's corresponding to heat map of a cat, then we know that a cat is present here. And of course, we'll have the ground truth for that because you know ground truth is required to train the model. Then you will predict this kind of heat map and then you will try to predict like very highly active values here. And then you will try to match that against the ground truth, which means that all these values should be low. These values should be pretty high. So that could be a very simple change to your classification network. And now you're actually solving the semantic segmentation problem. So one issue will be because this is kind of a compressed and no spatial information restored. So this quality is not going to be pretty good. 